Today on Shredding Spree, we're going back between the tape. It is Saturday, June 18th. I'm out here at Snow Summit and uh, I'm doing the Team Big Bear Enduro Race today. I haven't raced since last November at Vail Lake and uh, that was a pretty good day. Today it's my first time racing up here at Snow Summit. I think it's gonna be a real nice time. Woke up early, drove out this morning, and I was able to get in a practice run on each of the stages. I've got a little bit of a twist in my race scenario today. I'm actually signed up to race the hardtail class. So I'm not running the Stumpy. I'm gonna be racing my custom Dolly Eponym. And one of the reasons why I built this bike was to be able to race Enduro on it. So I'm really excited to put it to the test, see how fast we can go. Sometimes the turnout for that class isn't the greatest. At registration, there was uh, four people in the class and hopefully some more people showed up today to make the competition a little deeper. Part of the reason why I'm excited to run the dolly today, I've been making some tweaks and some little changes on it here and there and it's working really good. I've been riding it a lot lately and it's feeling really dialed. I had a heck of a time trying to get the right feel out of the brakes. Ever since I switched them over to this bike, I just felt like the throw on the levers was just a little too deep. And I feel like I start to lose a little bit of my modulation finesse uh, when the lever's getting too close to the bar. So I'm excited to run those. They're feeling good for the first time since I've had the bike. I recently updated the cassette to an E13 Helix, and that's been working pretty good for me. Good lightweight cassette, 12 speed. Uh, so gears are running smooth. The last thing I've done is I recently had my fork service. If you're anything like me, you kind of let the suspension service go way, way, way beyond the recommended amount of time. That's the one thing I don't really want to do myself. And a lot of the shops don't do the service in-house because it's just really time consuming. Waiting for them to ship the fork to the person that's doing the service, waiting for the service to happen and then it ships back. I've got to pay extra to get it shipped. But I recently came to learn about this company called Trail Tune Suspension. They're based up in Palmdale. So if you're a Santa Clarita or a Valley local, it's a little bit of a hike. But the beauty about Trail Tune Suspension is that when you call them, you get John, and John is Trail Tune Suspension. He's the guy that's receiving your fork, he's doing the service, and he's sending it back. And the thing that I really liked about the process with John is he finds a way to work with you to get your suspension to him without having to go the shipping route. Because packaging and shipping and paying for the shipping and all that, it's, it's just kind of a nightmare, and, and I'm happy to not have to deal with it. So yeah, John's my guy now. He did my suspension on my Stump Jumper Evo. He's now done the, my fork on my hardtail and it's just been a beauty experience every time. He's done some suspension work for my close friends. I think I've probably sent about half a dozen people to him so far, and across the board, it's been really great. I'm thankful that that stuff finally got taken care of. I could see the seals when he pulled them out of the fork. It was not a good scenario. Definitely time for, for a redo on those. That was just a long way of saying I'm feeling really good about the hardtail right now. The bike feels light and fast and damp over the bumps. So, yeah. I'm gonna buckle you up now. We're getting to the top of the lift and we'll pick this up at the starting gate. Wish me luck. Stage one coming in. Christopher. Hello. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? So I've got a solid run going here, and no, that's not the GoPro effect. This first stage was basically an all-out sprint on a predominantly flat course. After the pre-ride, I was feeling pretty good about riding the hardtail because the course was so mellow. But the bummer about racing the hardtail class on this day is that they sent us off dead last. I don't know if that's typical, but it put us out behind the entry-level classes, which meant I might have to deal with some traffic on my runs. Catching riders in an enduro race like this usually isn't a big deal unless you happen to catch someone that isn't aware of the etiquette of letting another rider pass by. And that's what I had to deal with here. I started with a soft warning to let them know I'm there. Coming up on ya! I hung back a bit and waited for them to move, but they didn't. So I tripped again. Rider, rider! 
still nothing. Then I tried one more time. When it's safe, come on. Oof. By now, we've passed plenty of safe areas for them to favor one side of the trail to let me by, and I'm starting to get pretty frustrated. On your left. Ah, you're good, you're good. I'm trying not to be too aggro, but I did pay $100 to race today, and at this point, I've been stuck behind these two guys for an entire minute. Coming by on your right. Go, go right. Thank you. Finally, I got by and finished the stage. The moral of this story is that if you're racing an enduro, you need to know that it's a time trial, not a motocross race. And if you get caught by the rider behind you, you should probably let them by. Damn it! Yeah, well, I didn't know, like, I never had to pass anyone in a race before. Yeah, it, you know... It's a bit, like, <clears throat> It happens. It, that's just part of enduro. Yeah. Such a one-line course, though, so... There's nowhere to just make a clean one. Yeah, yeah. Five, four, three, one, go! Hardtail! At some point between the two stages, I checked the timing and saw that I still won the stage. So while it's obviously most ideal to be able to have an uninterfered run, there really wasn't anything to be stressed about. Stage 2 was a bit more fun. It was still predominantly mellow terrain, but there was at least a little more elevation drop to carry a little more speed. I did end up catching another rider on this stage, but it happened to be at a point in the trail where it was wide enough for me to get by easily. Rider back! On your left. Woo! Stage two down. Long climb to number three. Hold on to your butts. Hello. Hello, you got 25 seconds. Is it Go super annoying down. to ask for a ghost in front of me? I can give you an extra 15. I'll take it. I asked for extra time between me and the rider in front of me because I knew this stage was the most technical and I felt like I might have the most problems with traffic here. Sorry to be that guy. <laughs> this thing's going all over the place, so watch out. Five, four, <laughs> you too. Here I am at the entry to the last stage, just before the biggest bummer of the day. Here is where my GoPro turned off and didn't record any of the third stage. The only stage that I thought was entertaining on the day. Boom! So, long story short is that I didn't make any mistakes and I finished the day with a win in the hardtail class. Overall, this was another fun day of racing. I don't have a ton of experience racing enduro, so in a lot of cases I'm still figuring out the lay of the land. I've tried a few different classes at this point and I've gotten a decent temperature read on what each class brings. So now with a bit more experience, I'd say that there's a good chance I won't be entering the hardtail class again unless I see more people starting to show up for it. But I love riding my hardtail so much that I might just enter my normal class on that bike anyway. So that does it for my hardtail enduro race free cap. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and check in next week where I'll be posting a video for my trip to Mammoth.